thank you so much for dedicating your time today to serve as a Scythe judge. Your role is an important part of this competition process, as your evaluation will help decide which teams most effectively fulfill the Scythe judging criterion. During this video, we'll review what you'll see in the competition rooms and the criterion you'll use to judge the teams. We'll talk about the judging tools that have been designed to assist you in evaluating the teams, and we'll review the decision-making and voting process. And finally, throughout the video, we'll provide you with some general notes and thoughts to help you in your role as a Scythe judge. Well, let's begin with the structure of the presentations that you'll see today. The competition room you'll be in is called a league, and while you'll only be judging the teams in your league, all the teams in every league are subject to the same format and rules. Each team has a maximum presentation time of 37 minutes, which will include two parts, an annual report and a live audiovisual presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, judges, please join me in welcoming the team. Following the team's introduction by the league coordinator, they'll have seven minutes to give you their annual report and set up their audio and visual equipment. The team cannot begin their presentation before the seven minutes has expired, as this time is also provided for you to read the annual report and familiarize yourself with their projects. Following the setup time, the team has up to 24 minutes for their audiovisual presentation. Please note, teams are not required to use the full 24 minutes, and there is no penalty for finishing early. When the presentation is concluded, there will be a five-minute question and answer period where you'll have the opportunity to ask questions of the team. A few quick notes for you regarding that Q&A time. Please refrain from making any lengthy statements or sharing too many praises of the team during the Q&A. Time's limited and other judges may have questions. So please, focus your remarks on asking concise questions directly related to the team and its activities. A final note regarding the presentation structure. In addition to their annual report, teams are invited to distribute a membership directory, typically referred to as a team bio. However, they're not allowed to distribute any other materials to the judges. If a team chooses to display materials during their presentation, the judges are not permitted to touch or keep the displayed materials. If the team displays something that you're interested in obtaining a sample of, you can make a request of the team at the end of the day, only after the results of the competition have been announced. Every Scythe team worldwide works within the framework of this same criterion, which reads, considering the relevant economic, social, and environmental factors, which Scythe team most effectively empowered people in need by applying business and economic concepts and an entrepreneurial approach to improve their quality of life and standard of living. This criterion is the sole basis upon which you evaluate the teams. While it's a single sentence, we've segmented the criterion into five elements to make it easier to understand and to allow you to provide specific feedback to the teams on the strengths and weaknesses of their projects based on the individual elements. The first element speaks to the relevant economic, social, and environmental factors. This element's designed to clearly communicate to the teams that they must consider and, when relevant, address these factors in each of their projects. When presenting to you, the teams should show that they considered the three factors for each project and that agree to which they address the ones deemed to be relevant. It is not mandated that every one of their projects address all of the factors if they can clearly demonstrate to you that a particular factor was not relevant. The next part of the criterion is effectively empowered. To understand this element of the criterion, you might think of the proverb, give a man a fish and he will eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he will eat for a lifetime. It's not enough for a team to simply do the work for a target audience. Their charge is to use a collaborative approach throughout their projects with a focus on transferring valuable knowledge and or skills that will equip people with the capacity to succeed on their own. The third element of the criterion addresses people in need. Scythe has intentionally provided a high level of freedom to the teams in this area so that they're able to directly address the needs of their own unique community. The responsibility of the team is to clearly define for you the need they identify for each target audience of their projects, explain its relevance, and demonstrate how they met that need. Next, let's review what's meant by applying business and economic concepts and an entrepreneurial approach. This element speaks to the approach that Scythe teams take in carrying out their projects. 
While there are many ways to address needs or problems, what distinguishes the SIPE approach is the belief that by applying business and economic concepts, we can create lasting solutions. It's important to note within this element that an entrepreneurial approach does not mandate that a team launch a business or work solely with entrepreneurs. Taking an entrepreneurial approach refers to the innovative or unique way in which the team addresses the need they've identified for each of the projects. And the final element of the criterion is quality of life and standard of living. This element is at the core of what SIF is about and should be at the heart of your evaluation of the teams. While the first four elements of the criterion speak to the process that teams take in their projects, improving quality of life and standard of living speaks to the outcomes. Quality of life most commonly refers to the notion of human welfare or well-being as measured by social indicators. This includes factors such as self-esteem, overall satisfaction of life, working conditions, ability to care for one's family, hope in life, and acceptance in community, neighborhood, and or work environment. Measuring an increase in a person's quality of life is somewhat subjective, especially given that there are various factors such as religion, culture, age, gender, and others that impact the way people perceive their own existence and consequently their quality of life. Standard of living refers to the physical circumstances in which people live, the goods and services they're able to consume, and the economic resources they have access to. This incorporates material comforts, ease of living, and opportunities for personal satisfaction. The measurement of successful standard of living is often largely income-based, but it's associated strongly with the access and affordability of items such as education or skills development, health care and sanitation, materialistic comforts such as housing, clothes and transportation, as well as access and affordability of sufficient food. Just as with quality of life, the responsibility of the team is to explain to you the tools they chose to use to assess standard of living for their target audience and the outcome of their analysis. Before we review the judging tools, there are a few supporting thoughts that we want to provide you with that should assist you during the judging process. First, let's talk about evaluating the outcome of the team's projects. While some teams may present the results of pre- and post-tests or surveys from their projects, as a site judge, we're asking you to look for results beyond just those outputs. If, for example, the results of a survey prove positive change in the target audience's knowledge or skill set, then the question you should ask is, what then? How did these people in need apply that knowledge to improve their own lives, and how was the team able to measure this effectively? The teams should demonstrate for you that concrete outcomes, not just outputs, were achieved by their target audience for each of their projects. On another note, some teams will have projects with multiple phases that might even take place over multiple years. It's important to judge each team based on the results from the current academic year, not just on ideas or plans or previous results. Projects that clearly demonstrate and improve quality of life and standard of living should be evaluated significantly higher than those whose full impact has yet to materialize. Additionally, it's not uncommon for teams to partner with other organizations on projects. It is, however, very important that the team clearly defines the relationship they had with any partner organizations and clarify exactly what their role and contributions were, as well as the degree of impact they can legitimately and fairly take credit for. Furthermore, teams are not required to conduct international projects. Although it may be impressive to see that some teams are able to impact those outside their home country, this mere international activity should not automatically warrant the team additional credit in your evaluation. Your focus should always be on the need, relevance, depth, and meaningful impact of the project, regardless of it being abroad or in the team's home country. Additionally, within a number of the essential components, the teams are required to focus on the longevity of their projects. For example, you're asked to look at factors such as long-term success and building a foundation for continuation you will most likely hear teams speak of the work they've done to create a lasting team, program, and projects. This is important as it relates to the long-term effectiveness of a team's efforts. And finally, you are strongly encouraged to seek clarification during the question and answer session if you feel any aspects of the team's projects, partnerships, and or outcomes are not clearly defined by the team in their annual report or live presentation. Everything you need today is in the Judge Handbook, which includes a quick reference guide, the site Judging Criterion, 
individual team evaluation forms, and a cumulative evaluation form. The Quick Reference Guide is a written overview of what we're covering in this video. It's a good reference point if you have questions later. The individual team evaluation forms are what you will use to evaluate each team that presents in your league. The evaluation form is separated into the same elements of the judging criterion that we discussed earlier. For each element, the form provides a scale for you to evaluate the success of the team in achieving the particular element. For example, for the first element, in carrying out its project or projects, did the SIFE team consider the relevant economic, social, and environmental factors? Under this question, there are three aspects for your evaluation. The relevant economic factors, social factors, and environmental factors. Using the scale of disagree to strongly agree, you will evaluate how you felt the team answered each part of this element through their annual report and or live presentation. In the example provided for Team ABC, you'll see that the judge strongly agreed that they considered and accounted for relevant economic and social factors. However, the judge felt neutral about the team's ability to consider and account for the relevant environmental factors. After you've evaluated the different parts of these elements, you will make an overall assessment of how the team achieved each element as a whole. Going back to the example of the first element, note that the judge who rated the team ABC with two strongly agrees and one neutral still gave them the overall assessment of excellent because the team presented a strong case for its consideration and account for the factors deemed relevant. As you can see, the form guides you through each element of the criterion in this same manner, providing space for you to record comments as you go. There's also an optional section at the end of the form where you can give the team specific notes about their annual report and or audiovisual presentation. Finally, let's look at the cumulative evaluation form. Before the first team presents in your league, please take a few minutes to write in the names of each of the teams at the top of this form in the order that they will present. Also at the top of the form is an overall assessment legend, which you will use as a basis for final marks and rankings. After each team presents, you'll look at the overall assessment you recorded on the individual team evaluation form for each element and give the team an appropriate mark on the cumulative evaluation form. For example, for Team ABC, if your overall assessment of Question 1, considering the relevant economic, social, and environmental factors, was that the team did excellent, then for the first judging element, you would enter an E in the relevant box for Team ABC. The cumulative evaluation form, which we just reviewed, will serve as your guide to ranking the teams at the conclusion of the competition day. After the final presentation, you'll finish completing the form and then use this information to give each team a ranking, with one being your first choice. It's essential that each team receive a different ranking, as no ties are allowed. Once all judges have completed their cumulative evaluation forms and ranked the teams, your league coordinator or a member of the SIFE staff will guide you through the final stage of the voting process to pick an overall winner from your league. It is very important that judges, league coordinators, and or SIFE staff members not engage in conversation about the results before or during the voting process. The ranking of teams is an individual decision made by each judge. Please note that the results from the league must remain confidential until they're announced at the awards ceremony. So we've covered the presentation structure, judging criterion, judging tools, and voting process. Hopefully you're now feeling very comfortable with the role you'll play as a SIFE judge. I just have one final note though for you before turning the orientation back over to the SIFE representative with you in person. You will most certainly see some teams today with very sophisticated presentations which use the latest in print and electronic technology. While presentation and excellence and creativity is encouraged, it is your responsibility as a judge to look past it. Your sole evaluation as a SIFE judge is simply considering the relevant economic, social, and environmental factors which SIFE team most effectively empowered people in need by applying business and economic concepts and an entrepreneurial approach to improve their quality of life and standard of living. Thank you again for your attention and for taking the time to serve in this very important role. There are some additional details about the day for us to share with you before beginning the judging process. And for those details, I'll turn it back over to your SIFE representative leading the orientation.